In this video on time tracking, I want to reach all the people that are looking to utilize their time better, who are looking to procrastinate less or maybe more efficient procrastination, people who are looking to achieve more, and just people who are interested in seeing how they spend their time every single day. Hey everyone, it's Ashley from Yoga For That. Today's video is about time tracking. I've been listening to a new audiobook and he started talking about how he tracks all of his time. And I thought at first that this was maybe a little bit much, but once I started doing it myself and really seeing the value in doing it, I realized how important it is to see how we spend our time during the day. I'm using it more as tracking my time that I work on my side business and my personal time because I know I procrastinate a lot and I want to see how much I'm actually procrastinating and what kind of things I'm doing when I'm procrastinating because sometimes we do need a break from our work but at the same time it's also important to actually be productive. I started time tracking last week and it for me I didn't use a special spreadsheet I'm creating one for you guys so you can find the link to that down below but at the same time it's actually super easy to track your time I do a lot of it physically in my journal you can do it on a notepad I actually started just kind of doing it in my head um, just to kind of realize what I was spending my time doing and how much I had achieved, say, in an hour span. So right now I have kind of two different schedules. Well, I guess three different schedules going on. So Monday, Tuesday, and Friday, I work from home. And Wednesdays and Thursdays, I work from my office. So Wednesdays and Thursdays do look a little bit differently. I do have a really structured time that I have to get up, work out if I'm going to work out before work, I have to be in the car to get to work by a certain time. I have to my lunch packed. All of these things that are kind of must-haves that are a little bit different than Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. Monday, Tuesday, and Friday, I do set an alarm, but I don't have to get up until really 8.30 when I start work because I can roll out of bed, turn on my computer. I don't really have to, you know, get up, have a shower, do my makeup, any of that kind of things. Um, so Monday, Tuesday, and Friday do look very different and right at five I can switch off and I can get to work on my other business. I'm finding so far that on Wednesdays and Thursdays when I'm in the office, when I get home, I'm just absolutely wiped. <laughs> and by the time I make dinner and kind of wind down for the day, I'm kind of done. So I try not to plan any of my side business things on Wednesdays or Thursdays, unless it's just answering emails or maybe doing a quick little blog post or something like that if I really feel up for it. But I try not to have that as a thing that I have to get done that day. It's kind of just if I kind of have the energy to do it. When I started time tracking, I will start from when I wake up in the morning. So that's why I kind of went on that little rant of how my days look different. So on Monday, Tuesdays, and Fridays, when I eventually get up, I start my day from when I wake up. And so it, say I wake up at 8, then I start time tracking every hour from 8 o'clock. If I get up at 7.30, I time, start time tracking from 7.30 and every hour from then on, etc. So I write down just in my journal when I woke up, what I did when I got up, go to the bathroom, brush my teeth, um, make coffee, maybe start my breakfast, whatever it is that I'm doing. Maybe I'm answering work email or my personal work emails anything like that. I just write down what I'm doing. So at the end of the hour, I try to keep track of what I did that hour, or you can keep track of it right as it happens. Totally up to you. And through the day, I continue doing that. I make sure that I take my hour for lunch. That's usually working out or something, um, reading a book, going for a run, running errands, whatever it is. But I still keep track of that time just so I know that I did that for that hour. And I'm starting to notice that I actually will procrastinate less-ish. <laughs> when I procrastinate now, it's more of just taking breaks. So if I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed by my workload at work, I would just switch to a different task, filing, 
uh, closing files, photocopying, whatever it was, but because I'm working from home, I actually can't do those things. So it's really dependent on what's coming through my email. I might actually put a few emails aside of things that didn't have to be done right away, but then I'll catch up on them when I have a little bit of downtime. And then that way I can keep on track of the emails that are coming in and actionable right away. But when I'm working from home, I don't really have kind of that luxury of switching work gears and and doing something that's a little bit less brainy or (laughs) just a little bit different than responding to emails. So what I usually do is I'll just, what I was doing before was going on the internet and looking at you know, people or global news or Twitter and just kind of switching my brain for a second. So now what I'm doing is I actually have a book on my phone and so I'll pick up my phone and I'll just kind of set a timer for five minutes and I'll just read for five minutes. So it's still technically procrastinating, but it is the ability to shut off my brain or turn my brain to something else and I'm still being productive because I'm reading. I'm not just kind of mindfully looking through um, Twitter or whatever it is that I'm looking at. So I've been a little bit more mindful of the things that I'm actually procrastinating with, which is super interesting. I started doing the time tracking because I was interested in seeing how I actually spend my time. And it made me realize that this is great even for your day-to-day job. So if you have more responsibilities put on you for any reason, less responsibilities, a new task or a new project that you've been given, maybe the person who gave you that project thought it wouldn't take that much time or attention. But by time tracking, you can keep track of how much time you're actually spending on a project or a task. And so when that person comes back to you, you can say, actually, this is super you know, intrusive to what I actually already have to do. It's actually super time consuming and you can show them how much time you're actually spending on it. The reason this is so important is because when we get a new task, sometimes it seems it's really small and it ends up being bigger than it was. But a lot of times we put a lot more emphasis on something. It becomes this kind of white whale of a task and we just kind of panic about it. Like, oh, it's going to take so long. It's going to take forever. You get anxiety and stress over it and you make it this bigger thing than it is. And once you actually start working on it, you will realize that it actually isn't that time consuming. It's just maybe a task that you had to break down a little bit to realize, oh, if I just break this down into little steps, it's not actually that challenging or that time consuming. And I realized that this week, this past week with my own tasks for my business, things that I would say, oh, if only I had an hour to do that one thing, like one hour undisturbed, then I could get that thing done. And if I didn't have that hour, I wouldn't even try to do it. But you can get a lot done in an hour (laughs) and a lot of things don't take an hour. So when I just started doing these tasks, I realized they were taking maybe five or ten minutes, not the hour I thought they were going to take. So I've learned a lot this past week in terms of how I procrastinate, how long my tasks actually take me opposed to what I think they're going to take me, and how much I can actually get done in a short period of time. I also realized last week things that monopolize my time. So things that aren't really mine, but take up my time. And these can be friends, family, pets, um, projects you have ongoing, maybe not so much, you know, sports or commitments because we can't really do anything yet, but that'll come up again. So you might be on a committee for something, you might be on the PTA, Strata, whatever it is. So what are the things that monopolize your time? And maybe it's dedicated time. You know, you know, every Wednesday at eight, you have this club or this committee or this meeting that you have to attend, or maybe it's things that come up during the day. So I am on my Strata and you know, we can kind of go weeks with nothing happening and then all of a sudden a bunch of things happen. We're answering emails, having to make decisions, and those are things that can monopolize your time because you couldn't plan for them. 
I love my husband dearly, but sometimes he can take up a lot of my time because he likes to share things with me. Um, My dog can take up a lot of my time because I have a schedule where I want to take her outside and she doesn't want to go. And then right when I get into the busiest part of my day, all of a sudden she needs to go outside or is getting antsy and wants to go for a walk. So there's a lot of things in your day that you can't really plan for, you can't be prepared for as much as you try. So it's important to notice and acknowledge the things that monopolize your time and maybe set up some boundaries if you can. When my husband and I first started working from home, we kind of really had to make some set boundaries of when we could disturb each other. He has a lot more scheduled meetings where I have to answer and make calls kind of just throughout the day. I don't know when it's going to happen. So just knowing like he'll tell me he has a meeting or I'll say to him like, hey, like just for this little bit of time, I just have a ton of work can do to do and I'll just kind of close the bedroom door because my office is in the bedroom and his office is in the living room and so being really clear about our boundaries and what we expect of each other to be able to get our our shit done is really important. I really think that time tracking is an effective tool that you should at least try and see what happens so maybe for a week keep track of every single day and like I said you can write it down or maybe you just kind of keep track of it in your head maybe you have download an app Um, I've just been using my journal or my notebook and kind of keeping track of of what I'm getting done and you might check in like I said every hour maybe every couple hours just noticing or maybe if you start something new a task or a project that you'd kind of been hesitant to start because you thought you needed a lot of time for it just start on it and and set a timer and whether you set the timer say for 15 minutes and just see where you're at when the timer goes or set the timer and just see that task through and see how long the task actually took you you might be surprised as some of the things you've been putting off because you thought you needed so much time to get them done and you actually really didn't. I'm learning a lot with this time tracking. I really hope and I really think it will help you as well. So please, please try and give it a try. If you're, you're struggling with procrastination or you're struggling with wanting to get more done or utilizing your time more efficiently, this is a really great, simple, easy tool that you don't have to spend really any extra time on. You don't have to spend any money on it. It really is just a tool to kind of keep you on track and to help you be more productive, more efficient, and hopefully more structured <laughs> moving forward. And again, feel free to use this at any any stage of your current life. So again, maybe you're working from home and that's new and you're, whether you or your boss kind of needs a, a general guideline of you know how much work you're doing or how much work you have to do, whether you have your own side business, maybe you just want to kind of get your personal life on track as things start to open up in the world again and we have maybe more priorities and more things that we can start doing with our friends and families again really noticing how we spend our time and what we waste our time on and I don't like to say that you know Netflix or video games or anything like that are time wasters because I really do believe that you know whether you're reading or you're exercising we need those things whether to shut down our brains or to take a break for our own mental health and physical health time wasters to me are the things that you're doing instead of doing the things that you should be doing so if you're putting aside a project and watching Netflix instead, then Netflix is a time waster. But if you're choosing to watch Netflix because you really want to catch up on your favorite show, or you're taking a break from your work, or you're taking a mental health day, or it's your day off, then go ahead and do it. But start to notice the things that you're doing instead of doing the work that you should be doing. And those are the things like picking up your phone, scrolling through social media. If you're not truly engaging in anything that you're doing, you're just doing it to so you don't have to do what you should be doing, then maybe start having something you can do instead. So like I said, I have my book on my phone so I can pick up my phone and read my book instead of just scrolling through Instagram, Facebook, Twitter 
um, anything like that, checking emails. I can just read my book for five minutes, change my mindset, kind of shake off anything that I was working on that I need to break from. Maybe you have another task you can do at work instead. So if you don't want to be working on the task that you have at hand, you can go do your filing. Whatever it is, just have something that's more productive to do that's on your to-do list rather than just jumping into one of your time wasters. Um, Yes, I hope (laughs) that all makes sense. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what your biggest time waster is down below as well. Um, I want to know what other people kind of jump to when they're just trying to get their minds off the task at hand. Maybe it'll give me some ideas for myself as well because I don't think time wasters are going to go completely out the window for me, but I'm always up to try something new. Um, I hope you have an awesome day. Please feel free to connect with me on social media. I'm at your Yoga for That pretty much everywhere. You can check out my online community, yogaforthat.com slash community. And of course, you'll find your resources down below in the description section and some more info down below as well. Have an awesome rest of your day, your week, your month, and we'll see you again next time.